Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming today in the midst of our April snow weather that we're having. Um, how many people in the audience actually know what the cancer registry is and what it does? Dr. Kirkwood. <laughs> um, that's actually okay because when I started the job a couple years ago, I wasn't sure myself. Um, I had worked in um, clinical research before. However, um, I had obtained information from the cancer registry and didn't really know what that meant or where it came from. Um, so the National Cancer Registrar's Association defines a cancer registry as an information system that's designed for the collection, the management, and the analysis of data on people who have been diagnosed with cancer. In essence, every patient that comes to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center with a diagnosis of cancer is put into the cancer registry. Um, I do need to ask Keith my notes at the bottom. Oh, you cannot do that? That's okay. I'm just bear with me for one second. I'm just going to. All right, so there are state and federal regulations that actually mandate that any healthcare provider who treats a patient diagnosed with cancer collects and reports that information. These are some of the laws that mandate um, this requirement. Cancer registries are overseen and impacted by several different organizations, such as the Center for Disease Control, uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Health, the National Cancer Institute, as well as some of the others that are listed on this slide. There are many organizations that guide and regulate the functions of a cancer registry. Tumor registrars are required to be certified, and we must maintain our certification on a regular basis. The way that the information is collected in a cancer registry is regulated and defined by these various organizations, and there are several manuals and training documents that are available to cancer registrars to make sure that the information that is collected is collected in a standardized way. This ensures that when each institution submits the data that is collected to the various state and federal um, agencies, that it's uniform and complete. At UPMC and the University of Pittsburgh, we have um, a cancer registry that consists of one director, two managers, and 37 tumor registrars. There are four specialized tumor registrars in our department. We have a head and neck cancer specialist, a lung cancer specialist, a breast and gynae specialist, and myself, the melanoma specialist. These specialized positions are grant funded and serve to provide high quality data for the doctors who are performing novel research in that particular field, um, such as Dr. Kirkwood and some of the other doctors who are here today. This slide shows the breakdown of the new patients that were added into the cancer registry in 2014. Breast cancer, the highest, accounts for 28.3% of the new patients. Brain tumors account for 3.8% of the new patients, and melanoma falls at 3.8%. I'm sorry, the um, brain tumors is 3.7, melanoma is 3.8% of the new patients that were added. The number of people who get skin cancer is called skin cancer incidence, and we've heard that from Dr. Kirkwood's talk and Dr. Holtzman's talk. Um, in the United States, the rate of getting skin cancer varies from state to state. This picture shows the highest incident rate in dark blue and the lowest incident rates in white. Delays in the reporting of melanoma cases to cancer registries are common since, as we've heard prior, that um, most of the patients are diagnosed in their dermatology offices or their primary care physician offices and it takes a few weeks to a couple of months before they're actually treated within the hospital setting and before we find out about them. There are four core functions of a cancer registry. 
case finding, which is the process of finding all of the eligible cases to be included. Abstracting, which is the process of collecting all the required data elements to be included in the registry. Follow-up, which is the process of continuous surveillance of the patient, uh, and we actually follow patients for their entire lifetime after they're included in the cancer registry. And reporting which is the process of reporting all of the information that is collected from a facility to the central cancer registry on a monthly basis and to national cancer databases on a yearly basis. Abstracting a new patient into the cancer registry database means collecting various data elements from the medical record. The cancer registry collects information such as demographics, such as your name, your address, your phone number, the date of birth, your gender, race, and your family history. We also collect information about the cancer, such as the date of diagnosis, the type of cancer, and the location of cancer in the body. We collect the stage, the type of surgery or the treatment received, and whether or not the patient was involved in any clinical research trials. When it's time to collect the follow-up information about a patient, the cancer registry documents the date that the patient was last seen by a doctor, the status of the cancer, whether or not the patient had a recurrence of the cancer or developed any additional type of cancer, and if the patient received any additional treatment for their cancer. There are several ways to find the new cancer patients that are treated at UPMC. There are automated systems that link the pathology reports, the billing codes, and the radiation oncology visits to the cancer registry database. And once these new patients are put into our database, each registrar is responsible for reviewing a specific section of the database to determine which patients actually need to be abstracted. Each patient who is entered into the cancer registry database is followed on a yearly basis for their entire lifetime. Each month, reports are generated from our medical records, which um, let us know if a patient has been, it's been over one year since the patient has had any kind of follow-up put into the registry. Uh, tumor registrars review the office visits in the medical records to determine the status of each patient. And if, they're not, if there have not been any visits in the past year, then the registry will actually mail out letters to your primary care physician or to you, the patient, to, re to try and obtain this follow-up information. The information that's collected in the cancer registry is submitted to the Pennsylvania Central Cancer Registry on a monthly basis and to the American College of Surgeons National Cancer Database on an annual basis. The information in the cancer registry can also be requested by doctors and administrators at UPMC as part of clinical and research hospital initiatives. <clears throat> Many of the tumor registrars are honest brokers. What that means is that we act as middlemen to provide this information for certain types of research activities where the patient name and personally identifiable information uh, may not be a necessary part of the research. That helps keep your information safe. We're not giving out social security numbers or information that links you to the particular information that we're giving to the doctors who are studying the disease. All types of research at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center are strictly reviewed and monitored by our Institutional Review Board, or IRB. The UPMC Network Cancer Registry um, has the following mission statement. We provide comprehensive, timely, standardized, high quality data. We provide key resources and services for cancer program accreditation. We provide honest broker services and we promote the education and certification of cancer registry professionals and the mentoring of professionals in the community. At UPMC, we cover a large geographic territory with our cancer registry. Um, 12 UPMC hospitals are included, and we have the only center in Western Pennsylvania that is designated as an NCI Comprehensive Cancer Center. Our hospitals follow over 90,000 living patients each year, 
and we have around 350,000 patients in the database in totality. There are about 17,000 new patients added to our database every year. Our largest hospital, UPMC Shadyside, adds about 6,900 new cases per year, and our smallest hospital, UPMC Bedford, adds about 142 cases per year. We also follow patients who are seen at our UPMC Cancer Center hospital-based clinics. We have a close collaboration with the Health Sciences Tissue Bank, the Oncology, Pathology, Informatics, and the Department of Biomedical Informatics for grant-funded and research projects. In conclusion, the UPMC Network Cancer Registry plays a vital role in the collection of important data about each new patient who is diagnosed with cancer and treated at UPMC. Many of our doctors and researchers utilize this high-quality data that can be found in the Cancer Registry in order to conduct research and for the analysis of patients and their disease. And the information obtained from Cancer Registries allows physicians to understand the results of the various treatment methods and to determine which treatment methods are the most effective. I thank you again for coming today. Um, if anyone has any questions, I think we have a couple minutes to um, answer any questions that anybody might have about the Cancer Registry. Sorry, I'm very curious.